Good morning. Good morning. All right, most of y'all half awake by now. That's great. Uh, it is good to be in the house of the Lord today. I hope and pray that you've had a great morning, a great opportunity today just to worship together. And uh, if you are visiting with us today, we are glad to have you here. Uh, there's a number on the screen there that you can text the word welcome to. It's 662 662- 222-5411, and that just gives us an opportunity to kind of know your name and just to say thank you for coming and uh, worshiping with us today. And if you don't want to do that, or uh, you don't have to, but there's a little visitor's card as well in the pew in front of you and in one of the offering plates on your way out today. If you drop that, fill it out and drop that little information card in there for us. Again, it just gives us an opportunity to say thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. I hope and pray that you receive a blessing. Uh, from being in the house of the Lord today. It's our, it's our desire that we come together today as a church family, as friends, as neighbors, and that we worship our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I hope you picked up a bulletin as well on your way in. If you do, you uh, and did, you were able to see all the announcements and things that are related to our church and church family. Uh, one uh, that's not there, we're going to try to do a work on start work on that second piece of playground equipment. We're going to try to do it in the afternoons uh, this week, weather permitting and everything else. So we're going to officially start at 6 o'clock, uh, work for an hour, a couple of hours maybe in each evening there. Uh, if you can get here a little bit early, 5.30 or so, we may get started a little early depending on how many folks are here. But uh, just we'll, we'll play all that by ear. Just come out and join us, spend a little time with us, whatever time you can and uh, try to get uh, some more things started. The first unit looks really, really good. We've got it bolted to the ground and everything else. And so get our second unit put together, and we'll be moving in that direction to actually officially open our playground uh, here, hopefully as soon as we can as well. Uh, one of the things for this coming Wednesday night, though, we want to make sure that uh, your child or children come to the Vacation Bible School uh, they're starting the Sacks of Love this Wednesday night as well. And so if your kid comes on Wednesday night for Bible school, we're asking you to bring one box of Jiffy Mix. And if you do that for this coming Wednesday night, uh, I know our kids had a great time, a lot of, a lot of activity last Wednesday night. We kind of kicked everything off. And so I want to encourage you to come Wednesday night, bring your children. Uh, there's other opportunities here. Of course, our youth are here. Bible study, ladies Bible study just started last week. And so if you want to drop your kids off and be a part of that ladies Bible study, you can, as well as our normal Bible devotional time and prayer time on Wednesday nights here in our sanctuary as well. So you see other announcements, things that are related to our church, church family next Sunday night. We have an uh, Operation Christmas Child recipient that will be here sharing a testimony. And so make note of that. It'll start at 6 o'clock next Sunday night. Encourage all of you to come back and be a part of, a, I think, what will be a very special, very learning time, but a very blessed time as well to be in the house of the Lord. And then you see our fifth Sunday. A lot of things happening on our fifth Sunday here uh, this month. And so come and join us. Uh, it's a lot. And uh, God's just blessing our church and our church family in so many ways. Thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us. Let me pray. Let me get everything started. And let's just worship together this morning. Bow with me for just a moment. Father, I want to say thank you for today. I say thank you for the blessings, Father. Thank you for the ways that you abundantly touch our lives over and over. And Father, today you have given us a privilege and an opportunity to worship together, to be in your house together, Father, just to be here and to be in your presence. And, and Father, I ask for your leadership, your guidance. Father, speak through me today as, as we share God's word together, Father, as we sing together. Father, lead Ken, lead our, uh, our choir, Father, lead us all as we just raise our voices to you and worship Father, may today be a wonderful day to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you, and we love you, and we praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Our music service this morning is going to be centered around the part of the gospel story of the price that Jesus paid for us. His death on the cross, his resurrection from the grave, and because of that, we truly can sing the grand hymn, Victory 
in Jesus. We're going to invite you to stand and help us as we sing, if you will, please. Continue with the hymn at the cross. Join us, please. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head? Such as I At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight I am happy all the day was it for crimes that I had done? Praised unknown and loved beyond degree At the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light of my heart rolled away it was there by faith i received my sight and now i am happy all the day 
But drops of grief can ne'er repay Dear Lord, I give myself away Tis all can do At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight. Now I am happy all the day. Congregation, you can be seated.
One of the classic hymns that almost everybody knows is the old rugged cross. We're going to invite you to sing. As you do, meditate on the words of this hymn. And let's join and sing together. suffered and died to pardon and sanctify me. So I'll cherish the old till my trophies at last I lay down. I will clean Roach gladly bear, then he'll call me someday to my home far away, where his glory forever I'll share. So I'll cherish me my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown This morning as we continue to look into the model prayer or the Lord's Prayer together, we probably find ourselves looking this morning and sharing together this morning probably the the one part of this model prayer that kind of gets us. Uh, The one part of this model prayer that we say is, you know, we, we like the first part of this next verse, but... Man, it's that second part of the verse that, uh, that really kind of throws us for a loop sometimes. It's that, you know, it's kind of that way a lot of times in God's Word. You know, we see things that we really, oh, man, amen to that. And then we see something else over here and it's, oh, me to that, you know. Uh, it just kind of gets us in, in at home. And, 
And this morning in Matthew chapter 6, verse 12, it says, And forgive us our debts. We like that part. As we forgive our debtors. And that's not always so easy. To forgive us our debts and to forgive those who sin against us. Many years through, uh, you know, <clears throat> being a pastor now, I've discovered that probably the biggest problem that people have is unforgiveness. Whether it be that they are struggling with the fact that someone won't forgive them for something that's happened, <clears throat> or they're struggling with the fact that they can't forgive somebody else for something that's happened. And I think sometimes we as Christians... We, we see how important being forgiven is. But sometimes we forget the idea that to forgive others is just as important. That we need to have a heart of forgiveness as well. Here Jesus teaches us not only to pray that we forgive our debts, but to forgive our debtors. Now I know it's not in the model prayer itself, but if you've got your Bible open there to Matthew chapter 6, look down for just a moment, verses 14 and 15. It says, for if we forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Here's the catch. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Forgiveness is important. Both directions. And so this morning, I want to look at some truths related to this wonderful concept called forgiveness. But pray with me as we start. Father, today is, is your day. And Father, it's an opportunity that we have today to be in your presence and opportunity, Father, that we have today to worship you and opportunity, Father, that we have today to allow your Holy Spirit to, to speak to our hearts, to, Father, maybe show us what we need to do, how we need to forgive ourselves, how we need to forgive someone else. Father, maybe even today to show us that we need to accept your forgiveness and allow you to be the Lord and Savior of our life. But Father, I pray that today as we spend these moments together, Father, I pray that you may speak through me and speak to those that are here, Father, by the power of your Spirit, so that when we leave today, the idea of forgiveness is something we understand. But Father, I pray that we don't only understand it, I pray that today forgiveness may be something that we're willing to do. And so, Father, take these next few moments. Speak through me again, I pray. And, Father, beyond anything else, may your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Some of these important truths related to forgiveness. The first one is this, forgiveness is required. It's not an option, ladies and gentlemen. Forgiveness is a requirement that has to take place. It has to take place in our life, first of all, if we're going to have eternal life. Sin in our lives causes an eternal separation between ourselves and God. When Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden, they had a very special relationship with God. But as soon as sin entered into that, uh, entered into the Garden because of Adam and Eve and their, their disobedience of God, they, com they, they were completely separated from God in that sense. God evicted them from the Garden of Eden. Isaiah tells us in 59, chapter 59, verse 2, but your iniquities are separating you from your God. Now that's real simple there, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to have a better relationship with God, we must be forgiven of our sin. 
The only way that we can be forgiven of our sin is to ask God to forgive us. Ultimately, it needs to happen every day in our life. But ultimately, it must happen for the first time as we ask Jesus Christ to come into our life, as we ask Jesus Christ to save us from our sins. When he died on the cross, Jesus paid the ultimate price so that you and I can be forgiven. It was all about forgiveness, God's love for us, so that we could be forgiven, so that we could be cleansed, so that we could stand again in the presence of the creator of the universe and have a wonderful relationship, an eternal relationship with him. And when we trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior, we receive that ultimate forgiveness. Paul writes to the Colossian church in chapter 2, And when you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive with him and forgave all of your trespasses. He erased the certificate of debt. Oh man, how you like that? How many of you here today would love if the bank would call you up tomorrow and say, listen, I need you to come down here at 9 o'clock in the morning. We're going to take the mortgage that we have on your home and we're going to strike a match and we're going to light it. We're going to burn it up. Your mortgage has been paid. I would like that. Some of you may have a house paid for, praise the Lord, but I would like that. Okay? Whatever it may be. A debt that needs to be paid. And it was paid by the blood of Jesus Christ. He erased, he says, that certificate of debt with its obligations. Man, it's not just that they, not just that they burn up a piece of paper, but the obligations are gone. It's not that just that, that Jesus died on the cross to forgive us of our sins, but the obligation and the payment of debt on those sins were also erased. Man, it was a once and for all. It covered everything. It was one of those 100% guarantee kind of warranties and not the one you get when you buy something for $19.99 on TV. I'm telling you. That lifetime warranty that you get from that stuff, I don't know whose lifetime it is, but it's not yours, okay? But the warranty that we got from Christ, the eternal life that we received when Jesus Christ died on the cross for all of our sins, man, it covers it all. That forgiveness is required of us. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood. Understand that forgiveness is required, ladies and gentlemen, but please, please never forget that forgiveness has a price. A cost was paid. And it's not a cost that somebody walked up to a bank and took some money out of their back pocket and said, here, I'm going to pay this a little bit of money and my, it's been paid. It doesn't work that way. This, this debt didn't work that way. This debt was a debt that had to be paid by the sacrifice, by the shedding of blood. And only, only Jesus Christ, that perfect Son of God who could die on a cross for all of our sins, He paid that ultimate sacrifice. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according, it says, to the riches of of His grace, not because, ladies and gentlemen, we're good enough, not because we really deserve it, but because of God's grace, Jesus died for us. Forgiveness for all of us is something that is required, ladies and gentlemen. We need that to have eternal life, but Honestly, it doesn't stop there. We need that on a daily basis in our life. Paul also writes later on in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 30. And don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed by Him for the day of redemption. In other words, you're already saved. He's talking to the church. He's talking to believers here. 
Let all bitterness and anger and wrath and shouting and slander be removed from you along among, excuse me, along with all malice. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You've probably heard that phrase before. You've probably heard somebody say that in some form or fashion before. And you think, well, what in the world does that mean? How do I grieve the Holy Spirit? Well, folks, let me tell you something. As a parent, have you ever just had times when your kids just kind of tore your heart out? You know, maybe they made a mistake and you just thought, oh, man, why, you know, why? Stuff happened in their life as kids growing up. And I mean, it wasn't the end of the world, no. But, but it just kind of got you right here. You didn't stop loving them, no. You didn't stop being mom and dad, no. You didn't stop caring about them, no. All of those things are still true. But man, whatever happened, whatever they did, it just kind of disappointed you. Man, there's a lot of things growing up that I enjoyed about being a young kid in Boca Chitta, Mississippi and growing out out in the middle of the country there and mom and dad and everything else. And, and, and you know, mom had the old head switch and dad had the old belt and I was scared of my daddy's belt. I can go ahead and tell you. That old head switch, the only thing I hated about that was mom said, go out there and pick you one. I didn't like that either. But as I got a little bit older, okay, you know, just got into my teenage years, comes a point where, you know, whipping's whipping, you know, it's, it's not much to that anymore. But I remember a day when my mama looked at me and said, Tim, let me step back. She said, Timmy, I'm disappointed that you did that. I wanted a beating. I would have rather had a whooping because, you know, it would have been over with and been okay. But for her to say that I disappointed her, you know, I did something wrong. It's my fault. I did it. But I disappointed her and it, and it hurt her. That was tough. That was tough. Ladies and gentlemen, we are God's children. And as much as any parent can love a child, God loves us more. As much as our, our parents are willing to do for us, God has done the ultimate for all of us. And there are times as His children when we really just mess up and we grieve the Holy Spirit. It's like God looks at us and says, Man, Tim, I'm disappointed that you did that. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Ask God each day for forgiveness. Struggle each day, but keep going each day. Don't fall down and not get up. Get back up. Keep moving forward. This forgiveness is required of our, for us for our salvation. It's, it's required of us after our salvation. And ladies and gentlemen, remember, it is required that you and I also forgive others. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, then Peter approached him and asked, Lord, how many times must I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? As many as seven times? He liked that idea of seven because that was really more than the Jewish law allowed, but he was bewildered and I dare say mind blown when Jesus says, I tell you not as many as seven, but 70 times seven. How many times has God forgiven us? I mean, think about that one for just a moment. How many times in the last week has God forgiven you for something? I hope you've asked Him to. If not, you need to, because you messed up in the last week. I promise you. And as much as He has forgiven us, 
You and I, ladies and gentlemen, have a responsibility to just forgive others. Doesn't mean the pain goes away. Doesn't mean that they did something that wasn't bad. It doesn't mean that we have to, you know, everything goes back to normal. But it does mean that forgiveness needs to be a part of who we are and that that forgiveness is required by God. Not by me. <laughs> okay, not by the church even per se. Forgiveness is required by God. Not only is forgiveness required, I want you to understand this morning that forgiveness can also be requested. Forgiveness is something that we, we need to seek. It's something that we need to search for. It's, we need to search for that forgiveness. We need to search and find that forgiveness. And really, in a sense of becoming a, a child of God, we have searched out, we have, we have sought the Father, we have trusted in His grace and in His mercy. We have asked for forgiveness, and forgiveness has been given. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9 says, For you are saved by grace through faith. It's not of yourselves. It is God's gift. It's not something that we do. We can't save ourselves. But forgiveness needs to be requested. Not from works, it says, so that no one should boast. Forgiveness of sin is to be requested as we search for a relationship with God. Let me tell you this. You may say that you are a child of God. I ask you this. When was the moment in time when you asked Jesus Christ to save you? There has to be a moment in time. There has to be a moment in time when you said, Father, I'm lost. Save me. Father, I realize I can't do this without you. Save me. There has to be a moment in time. You're not, you're not saved by osmosis. You're not saved because you just come to church. And you've been here since you were a child and you all of a sudden decided to walk down an aisle. You're not saved because you got wet in a baptistry. There has to be a moment when forgiveness is requested, a moment in time when you realize, I'm lost, I need Jesus. Jesus, save me. He does the saving, folks, okay? He draws us to Him. I do believe that. The power of the Holy Spirit is there to convict us of our sins. But He's not going to force you. He's not going to twist your arm. There must be a moment when you request salvation. Psalms 32, 5 says, Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my iniquity. I acknowledged my sin. I did not conceal my sin, I said. I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Wow. That's forgiveness. Man, that's what God desires to do to each and every one of us. We know it more probably from a New Testament verse, 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sin, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That verse starts by saying, if we confess our sins. This forgiveness is requested, ladies and gentlemen. Man, I tell you, it's hard to say I'm sorry. It really is. We struggle with that. We struggle with that on a daily basis. Somebody that maybe right now, somebody you know that you've hurt their feelings. You've never said, I'm sorry. And it's bothering you. And it's bothering them. And it's maybe a fractured relationship or a fractured moment. Whatever it may be. 
But this idea of saying I'm sorry is tough for us. But the sad thing about it is this. If we're so scared to say I'm sorry to other individuals, we better make sure we can say I'm sorry to the Lord. You may leave this world and not have, not have, uh, have fixed a relationship because somebody wasn't willing to say, I'm sorry. But if you leave this world and you haven't asked, said to God, I'm sorry, you're in trouble. If you leave this world without being sorry to the Lord, without having a relationship with Him, you're going to hell. Period. Forgiveness is requested of us, ladies and gentlemen. So many times, if we were just willing to say, I'm sorry. Does it mean everything goes back to normal? Understand that. Understand that sometimes bridges have been burned in such a way that they can never be rebuilt. But you can stand on one side of the bank and holler across to the other side and say, I'm sorry. You just may not ever get to the other side of the bank again. That's okay. That's life. That's how things happen. Good, bad, and the ugly, right? It goes on like that, folks. It's not necessarily our responsibility to put every relationship, every situation back to together the way it was. But forgiveness is part of what we are supposed to do. Because when we don't forgive, does it affect them? Sure, maybe. But I promise you, unforgiveness in your heart and in your life will tear you apart. And God never planned that. God never wanted that. Matthew chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. Jesus here, of course, He's saying these words again a little bit earlier in this Sermon on the Mount. He says, but I tell you, everyone who is angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Whoever insults his brother or sister will be subject to the court. Whoever says, you fool, will be subject to hellfire. Mm. Luke 17, verses 3 and 4. Luke 17, 3 and 4. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and comes back to you seven times saying, I repent, now, let's be honest. If something like that happened to us, we'd be out that fourth or fifth time, we'd be thinking, yeah, right. You know, you, you're just messing with me now. But God's Word says that if He comes back to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive Him. Folks, forgiveness is as much about cooling and taking care of our heart as it is the person who's asking for forgiveness. As it is the person who have hurt us and messed us over and all of those things. Forgiveness is also for us. It's required, it's requested it is relative. When we come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. And as a Christian, I hope and pray that that's something we do every day. We need to. As we come to the Lord and ask for forgiveness and, and, and know that in God's Word, as a child of God, God's Word says, I will forgive you. But God's Word also says that if we seek His forgiveness, we need to ask and, and we need to give forgiveness to others. There's a relative thing here, folks. You can't expect one thing. You can't follow part of God's Word and not all of God's Word. You can't expect God's forgiveness and not be willing to give forgiveness. Don't be bitter. 
Well, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15 says, Make sure that no one falls short of the grace of God and that no root of bitterness springs up, causing trouble and defiling many. Causing trouble and defiling many. That's happening to the person who's refusing to forgive. Listen, there are times in our life when I think we need to forgive other folks even if they don't ask for it. There are times in our life when we need to be willing to forgive even if we can't see that person and talk to that person. It needs to be a part of our heart. It needs to be a part of our mind. It needs to be a part of who we are as a child of God. That, hey, I'm going to turn this loose. I'm going to forgive this person. I'm going to put this stuff behind me. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm going to forgive because God forgave me. Don't let this stuff eat you alive. I've seen it too many times in families where something from an outsider looking in, something that was not that big of a deal has happened. And man, on the inside of the family, it was, it was the worst thing since, you know, it was the worst thing ever. And it tears a family apart. And one thing could have changed it all. Because, you know, sometimes as the preacher, you get to hear both sides of the story. You don't necessarily want to hear both sides of the story, but you get to hear both sides of the story. And I figured out a long time ago that somewhere in the middle is pretty close to the truth. And ultimately in a situation, if somebody would have just said, you know what, I'm sorry, I apologize I wish this had never happened. Please forgive me. Those few words right there would have healed everything. But you know, we can be hard-headed, right? We can be stubborn as, as followers of Christ. We can think that we're right and the other person's wrong and there's no way in the world we're going to say I'm sorry. Why do I need to say I'm sorry? They need to say they're sorry. It's their fault, not my fault. If that's the attitude of our heart, it's all of our faults. And if we love the way God wants us to love, folks, those words, I'm sorry. If we expect God to forgive us the way that He does every day when we say, God, forgive me. Man, if, if we just want that and expect that, just say that. Man, I'm sorry. May not change again the situation, but if it changes your heart, if it puts you where you need to be with God instead of bitter and holding a grudge and all this other stuff, don't do that. That's not what God intended. It's not what Christ was saying when He says that you know, forgive our debts and forgive our debtors. Jesus knew that we needed to be forgiven, but He also knew that if we were willing to forgive, man, life would be so much better. We wouldn't be caught up in some of this other stuff. So forgiveness is required. It is requested and that is relative to the situation, I guess you'd say. But forgiveness is also repeated. First of all, beyond any shadow of a doubt, understand this, that forgiveness is repeated by God. He says again in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins... He is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, there's not a lot of sure things in this world today. But I can promise you this. It is a sure thing that if you confess your sins before the Father, He will forgive you of your sins. If you desire to be a child of God, 
and you know that you need that and you confess your sins to Him and ask Him to save you, He will save you. There's no doubt in my mind. It is a sure thing. Forgiveness is repeated in this world around us and God does it every single day. Thank you, Lord. Because this man right here needs God's forgiveness every single day. This man right here needs to ask and pray, God, forgive me every single day. And this guy right here learned a long time ago that saying I'm sorry is not the end of the world. Matter of fact, it makes the world go round a whole lot easier. Whether it's a church matter, and hey, I mean, I started 20 years old preaching. I, I made a lot of mistakes, learned real, real early on, just say, I'm sorry. You'd be surprised. It works. Whether it's life, no matter what, forgiveness is repeated and it's repeated to us by God. Let me read this verse to you as well. It's Psalms 103, verses 10 through 14. Psalms 103, verses 10 through 14. As again, forgiveness is repeated to us by God. It says, He has not dealt with us as our sins deserve or repaid us according to our iniquities. Wow. Man, can you imagine? <laughs> can you imagine what punishment we would receive if we really got what we deserved for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great is his faithful love toward those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far he has removed our transgressions from us yes as a father has compassion on his children so the Lord has compassion on those who fear Him. For He knows what we are made of, remembering that we are dust. Ladies and gentlemen, as far as God is concerned, we're dust. We're, we're nothing. But He will forgive us anyway. More than we've ever deserved. Forgiveness is repeated by God. It is also to be repeated by us. I shared with you that verse out of Luke chapter 17 a, a moment ago about be on guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Over and over and over again, ladies and gentlemen, we have been forgiven. We've got three grandboys now. The youngest isn't big enough to do anything, so we can't really talk about him yet. But those other two, I tell you what, they can, uh, they can get into it. And I'll be honest, you know, they, they probably get away with a lot of things at uh, Nene and Papa's house. But they don't get away with everything, okay? I'm still a little bit too much old school, I guess. And so I had to get on to them one day. And it's amazing when you think about that. I mean, you know, a small child doesn't take a whole lot. I mean, you know, understand that. And, uh, but then they come back. And they say, Papa, I'm sorry. And, you hear, and your heart just goes, oh... You know, whether it's your child, our grandchild, our friend, those words need to be repeated by us. First of all, to our Heavenly Father, God, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry that I, I messed up this morning. I'm sorry I got in a fight with my wife. I'm sorry I messed up at school. I'm sorry, whatever it may be. God, I'm sorry. And then it may be, I'm sorry to the person at work, or I'm sorry to my spouse, or I'm sorry to the teacher at school. Whatever it may be. To receive forgiveness, we love it. And to hear those words, I'm sorry, it can melt our hearts. I think it melts the hearts of God, the heart of God. As we say, God, I'm sorry. That's what He wants to hear. He wants us to have that relationship with Him. This forgiveness needs to be repeated by us. Maybe it means we stop bringing stuff up. Maybe it means we don't talk about others. We, you know, whatever it means. We need to forgive. Because we have been forgiven. What a wonderful blessing to know. That as we pray and ask God to forgive our debts, He does. And then He tells us to forgive our debtors. And we should. This morning, if forgiveness is something that you need to experience, I want to encourage you to come forward. Maybe this morning you've realized that You've experienced a lot of things in life, but true, true, true forgiveness from God is not one of them. And so you need to come forward and we need to talk. And whether we can do it in the next few moments or we have to stay a little bit afterwards, I'll do whatever it takes. Maybe you just need to come and pray at this altar because you know you're already a child of God, but there's, there's some forgiveness that you need to ask for or maybe some forgiveness that you need to give and you need God to help you do that. Whatever it may be. These next few moments are a moment in time where we can forgive and be forgiven. Please don't squander this moment. If the Spirit is speaking to your heart today, don't squander this moment. May God's will be done in all of our lives. Father, I pray that, that uh, you may touch and move among us in these next few moments, Father, as only you can. May your will, oh, Father, be done in all of our lives. I ask and pray, Father, any decision that needs to be made, Father, the altar is open. Whatever needs to happen, Father, whatever forgiveness needs to be brought forward, Father, whatever we need to give to You or, or give to others, Father, may Your will be done, I pray. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stand together with me. Let's sing together. Come forward together. Whatever God has placed on your heart, I invite you to come.